Hi, I'm Kenny Yates, and this is The End Times. All the Jewish feasts are shadows of things to come. They're, they're, they represent something that is about to be fulfilled. Now, they also look back in remembrance of, but they also look forward to the fulfillment of. And the Feast of Sukkot is no different. Now, this feast is also known as, obviously, the Feast of Sukkot, the Feast of Booths, the Feast of Tabernacles, and the Festival of Engathering. I want us to take a look at the instructions God gave to Israel on how to celebrate this feast. It's found in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 39 through 43. On the 15th day of the seventh month, when you have gathered in the produce of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord seven days. On the first day shall be a solemn rest, and on the eighth day shall be a solemn rest. This feast is to be celebrated in the seventh month on the 15th day. As I always say, scripture is full of symbolism and numerology. So I want you to check this out. This is really interesting. The feast is to be celebrated in the seventh month. The number seven is the number of completion. So this feast is to be celebrated in the month of completion, which suggests to us that these feasts have now been been wrapped up is the last of the feast. These are the last feasts to be fulfilled. But notice with me, there is no word for 15th. It simply says on the 510 day. Now, listen to this. The number five is the number of the church or the bride of Christ. The number 10 is the number of covenant. Therefore, this feast is a covenant between God and the church or between Jesus and the bride of Christ, between him and his bride. It is God's promise to us that he will abide with us forever. Then notice that it says, when you have gathered in the produce of the land, you shall celebrate the feast of the Lord seven days. The produce of the land has already been gathered when they come to celebrate the feast to the Lord, meaning that the tribulation has taken place, the rapture has taken place, and now we are all caught up to meet Jesus in the air. I want you to look at verse 40 with me. And you shall take on the first day the fruit of splendid trees, branches of palm trees, and boughs of leafy trees, and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God seven days, the number of completion. You shall celebrate it as the feast to the Lord for seven days in the year. It is a statue forever throughout your generations. You shall celebrate it in the seventh month, the month of completion. You shall dwell in booths for seven days. All native Israelites shall dwell in booths that your generations may know that I made the people of Israel dwell in booths when I brought them out of the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. The Israelites were instructed to build booths or to build shelters and cover them with branches of leafy trees. They were instructed to live in these booths for seven days. It was designed for them to remember the time that God brought them out of Egypt and they had to live in booths in the desert. So it was looking backwards at what God had done for them in the past. Then it is also looking forward to what God will do for us, for, for the church in the future, the time to come, which is the millennial reign of Christ. When Jesus will dwell among his people and reign, and we will reign with him for a thousand years. So the only feast that will be celebrated in a thousand year reign is the feast of Sukkot or the feast of tabernacles. Turn with me please to Zechariah 
who gave this prophecy in his writings, Zechariah chapter 14, verse 16 through 19. Then everyone who survives of all the nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, and to keep the feast of booths. And if any of the family of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, the Lord of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be the plague which the Lord afflicts the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. This shall be the punishment to Egypt and the punishment to all the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. It is the only feast that is still celebrated because it is the only feast that is being fulfilled as it is celebrated. At that point, all of the other feasts have already been, been, been fulfilled. The Passover, Jesus has already died on the cross. He's already been raised to life again. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church, which is the, the, the feast of Pentecost, it's all been fulfilled. So let me just sum all of this up for you. All the feasts are a reminder of past events, but it also looks forward to a future event. It is just like communion. We look backwards to the death of Christ as well as look forward to his coming again. So it is with the Feast of Tabernacles. It looks back at the time when God brought the Israelites out of Egypt and they had to live in booths in the desert. Then it looks forward to the millennial reign of Christ when he will physically reign on the earth for a thousand years. If you liked this video, please hit the, the, the like button, subscribe for more videos like this one, and would you share this video with someone else? I want to say thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenny Yates, and this is The End Times. Be blessed and stay blessed.